So saith the wise Alondo. Hi there, welcome to the 10th episode, 10th episode, going going up there, of Mages and Murder Dads. I'm Cameron. And I'm Danny. And we have finished, spoiler, we finished Baldur's Gate. Wow. Did you think we would make it? No. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, the polls clearly did not say that we were going to make it. It was a fifty-one forty-nine until the uh, devastating truth came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, people tracking my Steam achievements saw that I had completed the game, and it really uh, that paper trail really really wrecked us over here. Well, I'm just glad that we finally have gotten to the point where our legitimacy has been proven. Mm-hmm. No one can contest this. Nope. I think that some people might. I know there's a way you can hack Steam accounts and you can like get little chivos artificially. You could like you could have like been emailed a, a final save or something. Mm-hmm. But you know, if, at this point, if you're willing to believe the conspiracy theories, a I don't know why you're listening to this podcast about us talk about a game we're not even playing. Yeah, right. In that hypothetical world, mm-hmm. B. You know, get a get a more interesting conspiracy. Mm. There's more out there yeah. for you. Yeah. No, I know that the Bill and Melinda Baldur's Gate Foundation, uh, there's the heavy conspiracy theory around that uh, and our involvement with them. But uh, no, there's been no tampering here. And to prove there's no tampering, you should hit the like button. Uh, if you like this, this ye old video podcast, you can hit the subscribe button. You could uh, follow me on Twitter if you go down to the uh, description. You can support the show on Patreon, and you can support on Facebook. We've had a couple people over on Facebook hitting the good old follow and the like button over there. Yeah, if you're in the if you're in the position where you still think this is an elaborate hoax, following, you know, subscribing, liking, donating on Patreon, all of these things will give you more evidence like we will Mm -hmm. continue to make these podcasts and you will continue to be able to uh to collate all that evidence of and and ultimately hopefully from your perspective uh foil us before our uh 100th episode many years from now your ability to make large charts with red circles and lines drawn in ms paint will be radically increased Mm-hmm. Probably tenfold. Mm-hmm. So before we talk about what we did for this episode, Danny, I want to ask you a question. Sure. If you could change one choice you made in this game with regard to your character, what would it be? Mm. So this is both in character creation or just a choice I've made narratively in the game. Mm-hmm. So I've got I've got two. Well... You wrote this question. I'm gonna I'm gonna tear <laughs> tear the uh, curtain down for just a moment. Mm. You wrote this question and you specified one. Yeah, it's true. So the one thing I would have grabbed. Well, you can that say fucking, too. I'm just pointing out the inconsistency. I, I would grab here. that strength tome in the fucking candle keep basement. Really? There's there's only one, and it would have popped me up to like 25 strength with berserker rage, and I'll just never have like even when I, when we're deep in throne of ball. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at my little character sheet and look at my strength and be like, God damn it, it could have been one higher. There's got to be some way to. Well, I bet not. Here's why I think not. <laughs> yeah, in Baldur's Gate two, there's got to be a stat maximum, right? Hmm. And there's got to be a way. Like, there's probably multiple routes to hit that maximum. I don't know if there are stat maximums in Baldur's Gate two. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll find out, I guess. We are. You know, tune in. That that might be in the 80s. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, what's the other one? You said you had two. Oh, the other one would have been not ever... Like, you know how I reloaded the game and mm-hmm. then did it without a party? I would have just n- not done it with a party. Like, because that's, that's probably 10 hours of my life that got wasted. Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah. What about... What about old Ticklevar? I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have a good idea. I think I probably would have not murdered that uh, priestess of Umberly. Mm-hmm. That, like, child priestess. I feel bad about that. 
Mm. That was out of my control, though. What about you being a sorcerer? That's paid off, I think. I think I'm... Really? You finally... You got through the the awkward adolescence. Mm Mm-hmm. You got through your teens, tweens, and in-betweens, and now you're a a fully grown sorcerer person. Sorcerer man, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a driver's license. I can uh, drink... You can do anything you can I want. Cast more than three spells. I can a day. vote. I can. I can cast like nine spells per day. Mm. Are they good ones? Three of them are Melf's minute me- meteors. Mm-hmm. So and they're real good. I've I've killed. I want to say seventy five percent of the enemies that I have faced after getting that spell with that spell. Oh damn! Yeah, interesting. It's pretty brutal. Well, 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 good for you. It feels like, you know, you don't have that many regrets, and uh, that's the way you should live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a life philosophy, and it's worked out completely. So we're ending well, the game. We are, right now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. No. So we've done that. So what is the first thing you did in this kind of... So we last episode, we finished up Tales of the Sword Coast. I went to Werewolf Island. You did the Living Nightmare, that is... Durlag's Tower slash mm-hmm. cult fantasy world. Mm-hmm. So what and did you the do? fact that nothing happened after that was corroborated by a viewer listener. Oh well, yeah, good to know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I uh. So I went back to Baldur's Gate for the first time since we exited Candlekeep, the Candlekeep catacombs. Mm-hmm. Um. I know that you have been there because uh. Because your little werewolf quest required you to go get a C chart. Mm-hmm. So I come in and I find out, much as you did, oh shit, the Flaming Fist is after me. And I had a similar, like, talk with them. But I said, hey, I'm not going to kill you, bro. You can take me. I, I look forward to proving my innocence. They, um, they haul me in front of uh, Angelo. And, uh, and we say a few words. And I said, look. You, I, I know for a fact you're just you're just some lackey, um, and I'm I'm gonna get you. Mm-hmm. And Angelo says, "Bra bra bra," says that, and they throw me in a prison cell. And there's a creepy old gnome. You remember this gnome? Did you see this gnome? Well, I want to tell you a little bit of a difference about what happens there if you have a party. Okay. So if you have a party and you do that, he so he says, "Kill one of them at random," and then a guard rolls up and murders one of your party members. No shit. Yep. Hmm. Yep. I do. <laughs> There's no additional content to this, but then you just do, and you know this because you had to reload. After. Yep. I knew yeah. that is why I know this. Mm-hmm. Okay. So fun. So you got to be a little bit more polite than I am. Mm-hmm. I, I um, actually like begged for my life. I was like, please don't kill me. <laughs> please don't kill me, Mister Big Bad Man. Um, yeah, I get thrown in a, in a prison wing, not a cell, like a whole wing. And there's one other prisoner in the whole wing and it's a creepy gnome that's, that's real mean. And I talk to him and he's like, man, I bet you can't find a secret exit that I know of. And I said, I'll find it. Shut up. I'm not talking to you. So I wander around a bit and then I talk to him again. Oh, I, I, I bet you can't find it. I said, I dislike you. I actively dislike you. And on the third time, he asked me a riddle, and the answer to the riddle is mirror. Like, it's one of those things like, oh, I'm I'm a mirror. Well, it doesn't say mirror in the the riddle. That (laughs) would be hard. I'm a mirror. (laughs) I'm a mirror. I I refract and reflect light variously depending on conditions. What am I? (laughs) What am I? Answer, a mirror, bam. And then I get teleported outside Mm -hmm. of of the fort. And I immediately go back in to kill Angelo. Really? You were like... (laughs) I wasn't kidding about my my idle threat. Yeah, no, it's yeah. The second I get out of here, I'm coming back in here to kill you. Um, so I do, and I murder everyone in there, and he's not there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that more or less. I, I guess you uh, you answered questions from the from the gnome. Oh my god! So I had to talk to this gnome. So I talked to him like four times. mm Hmm. And eventually, he's like, can you guess how many children I've murdered? What? Yeah. That's a, hmm. I can't believe you got to answer a riddle that's about a, a mirror. For me, he was like, guess how many children I've murdered? And he gave me like a like a sequence where you're like adding and subtracting things. And he's like, 
tell me the additional number of children I've murdered. And it was like 33. Hmm. Yeah. Creepy. It was creepy. It's way more creepy than a, a mirror riddle. Mm-hmm. But then you let me go, and I felt bad about letting him also leave. Yeah, because he's going to go murder children now. Almost certainly. Or tell them, it could go either way. He could tell them a, a, like an innocuous riddle, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like a regular straight out of the Hobbit type riddle. Mm-hmm. Huh. Hashtag Hobbit riddle. So I get out and I uh, I head to the Iron Throne after I after I get out of prison. So, um, so here's a quick question before we talk about the Iron Throne. Sure. Did you ever talk to Tomoko? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. After, go ahead. after. So I think comes comes when I was were debriefing a little bit before the uh, the episode, maybe pre briefing. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's just briefing. It, it feels like uh, we had a really different way of going about this. So I was just talking to I talked to like a few townspeople, or they they you know they they dialogue initiated with me, and at least two of them said, "Hey, you need to go to the Iron Throne and like figure things out." So I figure, oh, that's a breadcrumb. I'll go to the Iron Throne. Mm-hmm. Um, so I go there, and uh, at, there are several people leaving, um, and they're like, hey, uh, you need to... It doesn't matter what's going on here. Uh, Saravok has uh, ruined everything, and we're just all... We're all evacuating here. It, it's over. It's over, man. Um I get to the top, and there is a kind of his mistress, a consort of Saravok. Uh, do you remember her name? I have Cytheria written down, but I think that also might be the fake drug in the movie Contagion. Mm, okay. So it's something so like that. It's something along those lines. And uh, we have a little fight. She summons two ogres named Urg and Arg. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I didn't. And not, I didn't. To beat that fight, I've got to like go downstairs and kill them separately, mm-hmm. and then I go to an inn and rest. <laughs> and she's she's waiting for me, so I, I I go back and I kill her. Okay. Yeah. The complicated Balthazar. The the Balthazar routine. Look, he's got to. He can't operate on anything less than sixteen hours of sleep. <laughs> he's got to get his solid sixteen in. You rage so much. <laughs> yeah, you know, you get tired out. You're like a big toddler mm. <laughs> with uh, that moves hyper fast and can never be stopped. And has a and has a plus three great sword called like the World Ender. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. A, a very terrifying toddler. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I think uh, I think that's when I pick up a a diary of Saravok. Mm-hmm. Did you read through that diary? I did read through that diary. I have some like choice quotes written down too. Yeah, let me let me have them because okay. I skimmed. Okay, you, well, know you me. tell me what. Tell me the general idea while I look at this. Um, I skipped to the last entry because I figured that was the important one. Oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I, I went there, and uh, it's like, oh, and so the last entry was written um, while I was on my way to Candlekeep. Mm-hmm. And he was setting up the trap, and he basically se- and he basically has a. He wants to, I think, take the Lord of Murder's place. That's like the general gist I got from the diary. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He says uh, the reason he's keeping the diary. This is the quote I wrote down. He says the future dead must know how the Lord of Murder came to them. Hmm. It's pretty good. That's a pretty good like uh, metal album name. Yeah, that's like a that's actually you just translate to that to Latin, and that's a Wolves in the Throne Room song mm-hmm. name. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, so yeah, that's what he's all about. He actually gives you a pretty cool thing. Uh, if you read the whole thing, he says that he was in Can- the reason he knows about you is that he studied in Candlekeep while you were there. Damn, and he like saw you, and he was like, "Oh, I gotta kill that guy." <laughs> so he he automatically knew it takes one to know one yeah basically uh apparently there are markings it's it's not no one talks about this in any other part of the game but in his uh in his diary he says that the player character has quote unquote the markings of a ball spawn Mm. So we don't know whether those are physical or a magical mark that that he could detect possibly no idea it, it does hmm. not 
is, is not more clear beyond that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. But you did not go to the Iron Throne first. Is that true? No. So I got the quest. I think I talked about it a little bit last episode, but I got the quest from Tomoko to, she was like, hey, uh, I know that you're a child of Ball. I know that you're trying to kill Saravok. Meet me outside the Flaming Fist headquarters and I'll let you know what's up. And she like ran off and I went over to Werewolf Island. Mm-hmm. Um, so this this episode actually started by going to her. Um, okay. For today. Like I got, I also got captured by the Flaming Fist and everything, but I think I did that right after. That's right. Ago. I think there's actually footage in episode nine of you in a, you getting arrested or you in a cell. Yeah. You can be arrested yeah. multiple times though. Okay. I think. Maybe not. I don't know. In any case, uh, yeah, definitely the first time I was arrested, I'd save loaded and made sure that didn't happen to me. Gotcha. Uh, but, um, so yeah, so you talk to Tomoko and she says, yeah, I'm in love with Saravok. Uh, he believes that he can, he can become a god, but you need to convince him that that's not true. And the only way to convince him that that's not true is by defeating him. So that's kind of her whole thing. And she says, uh, you also need to kill... Cytheria or whatever this the woman's name is, the consort. Mm-hmm. But she st- says specifically, you need to defeat Saravok, but you can't kill him. Yeah. Because I, I've, you and I have to talk sense into him. Yep. Mm-hmm. She does say that. So, But the, it's interesting because she prefaces this whole conversation with, at the beginning, hey, I need you to, to promise that you'll keep your promise. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to make you promise something, but you got to promise me which already there's a lot of layers of promises a a daisy chain of promises yeah yeah um and i say well i'm gonna keep my word but let's hear what you have to say and then she kind of tells me a lot of this information and and i say well look i'm i gotta kill this guy like Mm -hmm. like, i gotta i gotta murder a saravok right sure i had a dream about it oh you were told you needed to do it from like a plot perspective yeah Mm -hmm. um and and also Balthazar is pretty utilitarian, and Balthazar under, like Saravok is too dangerous to live. He's a bad dude, he, he, and we find out that he's an even badder dude. Yeah. Um. But so when I say that, and when I stick to my guns, Tomoko says, "Well, I was gonna tell you some shit, but now I'm not really." So, so good luck. So you just failed the <laughs> quest, basically. She well, I that the a quest thing came up and it said fail. Uh, it said, "Hey, you you talked to Tomoko and you told her that you had to kill him." So she said, and I think at the end she's like, "The next time we meet, it might not be on friendly terms." And then she walked away. Hmm. So at this point, I start wandering around the fucking map trying to find a quest trigger. Um, and yeah, I go th- back. This is like yeah. a uniquely. Like, the game fails to send you places after you talk to Tomoko. Mm-hmm. It is very unclear. So you had to read uh, a note that was on Rielatar's desk behind Cytheria. Mm-hmm. That's what would have told you. If you didn't talk all the way through the Tomoko conversation, that would have been the next little daisy chain to get you to the quest you're about to talk about. Yeah, I got incredibly lucky because... I did not read that note. I just kind of glanced at a lot of these notes. I'm sure it's in my inventory, but it just ends up getting copied and then just put in the scroll case. Mm-hmm. But in the Iron Throne, there is a basement in the entry level, in the in the like right corner of the Iron Throne entry foyer. And when you go down there, it's like a bunch of barrels, like a smuggling operation. Mm-hmm. There's a guard down there that's like, hey, you don't belong here. And so I murdered him. And when you go to the edge of the screen, you find that you're in the sewers. And I was like, huh. So I just like hugged the right wall and then I was in an undercellar. Yeah, you, and I was you like, got this, profoundly lucky. I got profoundly lucky. So yeah, so the way that you're mm-hmm. supposed to... I get, there's two ways to actually get here on purpose. And this mm-hmm. is where you have to go for people um, who are kind of following along. You have to go to... The undercommons in order to find a, an assassin named Scythe and mm-hmm. his uh, wife, Kristen, which is very funny to me. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah, so the, there's two ways to do that. The first is to talk to Tomoko, and at the end of her conversation, she says, look, if you go find Scythe, then you're going to find out, like, what needs to happen beyond uh, beyond here. Like, Saravak has made a plot with him, so you can go find him. You can mm -hmm. also look on Rielatar's desk, and there's a little note that says um, that's from Saravak to, to, or from Scythe to Saravak, saying he accepts the job. And that he'll be waiting in the undercommons. Um, also, for Cytheria, or whatever her name is, if you are killing her, and she's down to, like, a fifth of her health or so, she says, wait, 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 don't kill me. I'll tell you what to do next, basically. Cytheria didn't get a chance to get to a tenth of the health. I hit her for 54 points of damage when she was above half. Okay, that's brutal. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it it like broke my game. Her gibbs went so everywhere and like freaked out, and the game got really slow until I left that area. Weird, weird, yeah. weird, weird. Um, but yeah, so she'll tell you. Also, she says actually that Saravok is in the Undercommons, which is really amazing because she's just leading you to a trap. Hmm. Um, because Scythe is there. Mm hmm. He's a little rogue fellow with like speed. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. He's got well. He's got like blur. He's got like motion blur on. Yeah, I've got motion blur on too all the time from some fucking cloak I bought. <laughs> so, fuck him. Or, <laughs> I feel like I, you know, maybe maybe this is something to talk about at the end. But I feel like the game is much less interesting for Balthazar. Like it, it's just it's, a lot of aspects of the game are a nuisance for Balthazar, <laughs> right? I think that that commenter on the on the la or on a video or so ago, like Balthazar is plagued by nuisance. I think that's kind of how the character approaches a lot of aspects of this game. Mm -hmm. I've been in the level cap so long. I think I killed Scythe, and I think Kristen was down there too, right? Yeah, yeah. Kristen is also there. I think she's alive. Really? I don't think I fucking killed her. She's invisible most of the time, and then she like popped out. And like started casting a spell, but my party took them both down very quickly. It was not mm -hmm. a, it was not a complicated adventure even for me. But yeah, this is how you get the invitation to the Ducal Palace, um, which I I was, you know, luckily I stumbled upon this this underseller as as quickly as I did because otherwise you're just wandering around. Um, uh, although a Harper did walk up to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and give me the score. Although the Harper was under the impression that it was uh, Omnian Shadow Thieves mm -hmm. that had killed uh, the Dukes, which just proved that despite the fact that they're the good Illuminati, they're also horribly inept. Well, everyone right? thinks it's the Shadow Thieves. Yeah, but the Harpers are supposed to fucking know, you know? <laughs> like, the Harpers are actually supposed to know things. That's and true. they don't. They're just Joe Schmo. Yeah. He's just passing on a rumor that is actively being Let me tell you, you know, perpetrated. Like the, the best thing about the Harpers for right now. Mm -hmm. So I was reading through um, Storm King's Thunder, the most recent D&D &D adventure oh, yeah. for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Reading through that, and you know there's like a million NPCs in a million different towns that all have like thoughts and lives and names, right? And I'm just mm -hmm. kind of scanning through this thing. And in the biggest city in Ten Towns, do you remember Ten Towns? I think so, yeah. Ten Towns is like a, a big like city-state at the very north of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is an agent, like, a, like a, a homeless woman, who lives in this like icy hellscape place and who like tends people's fires for food and like tells stories and is a good companion, right? Just like you're... This is like the NPC who's just around and can generally give you information. That person is a Harper agent. Hmm. Her only possession in the book is a stone to speak to other Harper agents. So that Damn. kind of tells you what this organization looks like and like the grand scheme of the Forgotten Realms. Hmm. Anybody? I don't know. I don't. I could go either way with that, right? Well, what is this person gonna know? Like for real. What are they going to find out in 10 towns in this, like, awful city mm -hmm. that's going to be helpful for anybody? But, man, when shit goes down there and it's important, they're yes. going to really pat themselves on the back on having the long the long plan, right? That's maybe what of, I'm saying. Of, like, is installing the, her there. Yeah, maybe the Harper's long plan is not that helpful. <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe the Harper's long plan that that tells you that the Shadow Thieves killed uh, Scar, which everyone knows, literally everyone in the whole city knows this. Maybe that's mm-hmm. just not that helpful. Mm. Anyway, we're thinking about the Harpers there. Yeah. Jeez. Come on. Come on, guys. Step it up. Mm-hmm. But you know what time it is? Oh, boy. Is it really? It's time for the Elminster Minute. Ooh. So, uh, I don't really... I You know, I read that book, like, weeks ago now. And sure. I've not updated my Elminster knowledge at all. Like I no, and I and I can tell by uh, you know I can tell by your tone that I don't know how many more Elminster minutes there's going to be. I think this is going to be the last. I <laughs> this is the final episode of the Elminster minute. Um, mm-hmm. But I did listen to a podcast, like the official D and D podcast, the other day, where Chris Perkins and another person whose name I can't pull right now talked about Elminster and Volo, and they said that. Uh, that Ed Greenwood, the creator of the Forgotten Realms, says that Volo is his more cheerful side and Elminster is his more serious side and that they're two parts of the same person. Damn. That was the Elminster minute. Probably not even wow. a minute. Wow. Yeah, great. Good one. Yep. I regret ever inventing that segment. <laughs> You should have uh, <laughs> you should have heard uh, Kunzelman before we started this when I asked him, hey, you got your, where are we putting the Elminster minute? And I think the first syllables out of his mouth were, I fucking hate, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah. Uh, not a great idea. I have a great idea for season two. Oh. The season two um, blank minute. Which we, what seasons might be are just arbitrarily chopped up into 10 episodes. So, like, whatever happens on, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. it's gonna be- X plus one episode where X is a, a divisible by 10, mm-hmm. uh, that's just the next season. Mm-hmm. That's not how that's going to work. Oh, really? Okay. No, season two will be Siege of a Dragon Spear. But we'll talk about that at the end of this episode. Okay. So, you went to the Ducal Palace. Yeah. Um, What's a, what's a ducal palace? It's the it's strange. It's I would imagine the palace where the dukes live, but don't they have you know separate lives and families? Yep. I don't know. Um, you uh, you roll in and you get checked. Your invitation gets checked before you enter, mm-hmm. and then when you get in, which like you can literally cannot the gate does not open until you get checked the invitation. So I wonder what the purpose of that second dialogue little prompt is i wonder i also thought about that too i wonder if there is a way to kill that first guy Mm. and there might not be a way to share flags or they didn't have a an easy way to share a flag between killing that guy and then uh aggroing the people in the building Mm. that was my thought but i don't i don't know how much that checks out interesting yeah but you roll into the ducal palace and there's already a very informal meeting going on no one's seated it's just uh like all all like matters of state take place standing in a in kind of like a large den. Um and uh Saravok's there, there, so I immediately click my little sword and attack him. So Saravok is um dressed in the most evil armor imaginable. Wielding a sword. It's like yeah, he is always wielding a sword. <laughs> Much like Balthazar. <laughs> Come mm-hmm. to think of it. But yeah, he's it's like big plate armor spikes shooting off of it in any direction Mm -hmm. he's got this big booming murderer's voice Mm -hmm. i think his helmet is a skull yeah and people just want it's the same person that killed garion yeah and they just want him to be like president of baldur's gate yeah but anyway Um, so yeah so the well the impromptu go ahead you you clicked on your sword mm -hmm. and you're gonna slay him yeah and then dialogue interrupts me Mm -hmm. and it's really just a very beautiful like as we're recording this this is going to date it but i just read in the new york times that uh the citizens of columbia have voted against a referendum to affirm the peace process with the farc Mm -hmm. so we're on the heels of that we're on the heels of brexit and this entire little little uh get together has just res- resoundingly like affirmed in my mind the flaws of democracy, right? 
Um, well, the, I, you know, I'll be honest. I also, when like mm-hmm. reading through the dialogue that occurs here, I was like, oh, this is profoundly prescient stuff. No, it really, it really is. It's uh, so uh, now all of this is going to get turned on its head in like 30 seconds. So mm-hmm. bear with us, yeah. uh, viewer listeners. But yeah, you have a bunch of citizens, politicians, you know, counts and countesses, who, who knows, right? And they're all like, oh my God, it's Om, what are we doing? And then somebody else says, well, it's the Zinterim, you know, like throwing out fucking red herrings here and there. Mm-hmm. And uh, people are just like so unfocused. And uh, finally, one of the other dukes interrupts and says, "Hey, hey, we gotta, we got, we, we gotta make an announcement here. Saravok's here to talk. So everybody, listen to him. He's real cool." And so Saravok, it's really interesting because all of this is voice acted except Saravok in this section. Yeah, and I which wonder... I think is an which is an interesting choice aesthetically, and I think it kind of works, right? Yeah. Um. Saravok launches into like, you know, this long, hey, the rumors are true. Om's arming itself against us. I'm here to save the day. We've got a bunch of iron stockpiled. I'm going to fucking, I'm just going to give it to Baldur's Gate. Um, unfortunately, our best general is, is very, very sick right now. And it's okay. I will take charge of the Flaming Fists. And we are going to go down and we are going to occupy Nashkel because that's kind of the, the bottleneck between us and Om. And everything's going to be all right, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. like, I, I, don't worry. I'm just going to become an, an autocrat. Don't worry mm-hmm. about it. And then the other dukes were like, hold on a minute. You can't do that. You, yeah. You can't <laughs> become an autocrat. Mm-hmm. And right when they say, whoa, I, I hold your horses, all of those people, so all the, all like, all those individuals that you were thinking oh man this is a uh this is a this is terrible democracy is terrible all those motherfuckers were doppelgangers every single one of them was a doppelganger the only, the only people... people that aren't doppelgangers are saravok the dukes a, a few people like citizens that are outside of the main hall and the flaming fists yep mm-hmm. so yeah how did you solve this fight this is a very difficult fight. A super difficult fight. I had a hard time. You tell me how you did it. Because you're only... So I'm six people. I can kind of set up. And I do a little set up. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, I did it. It took me probably five times. But I really wanted to make sure that uh, I did it optimally. So tell me tell me how you did it. Yeah, this probably took me six or seven times. Um, the real puzzle... Uh, I tried to be ambitious the first time and just kill Saravok, which he's not he he's not uh, aggroed mm-hmm. at the beginning. He just stands there while the uh, while these people try to take down the Duke. And uh, the the greater doppelgangers are very they're formidable mm-hmm. and they all have uh, they all have haste on them. So the solution ends up being because I want to save the Duke. Yeah, yeah. So there's two Dukes there, two Grand yeah. Dukes. And the fight is different if you let them die or you or they survive. Because the doppelgangers yeah. just make a beeline for killing them first. They kind of leave yeah. you alone for a minute. Or they left me yeah. alone. So what I did was the moment I could move after the dialogue initiates, I move right next to... I think his name starts with a B, but the, the male duke. It's like Bath or something. Yeah. Yeah. I roll next to him, and I block a lot of the doppelgangers. Before the dialogue even started, I had drank a, a potion of speed. I was berserk, and I drank a potion of valor. Wow. So, fight starts. I kill a lot of these doppelgangers, but, like, killing all of these doppelgangers get get me low. And I know that the second the last doppelganger dies, Saravok himself aggros, more or less beelines for me, casts, like, a fiery hell from above spell Mm -hmm. so um i kill all but one doppelganger and that other doppelganger is uh like a morale fails his morale roll and starts running around but the potion of speed or like the speed effect on the doppelganger is still active so no one can catch this doppelganger I walk up to the foyer on the far right side of the room and I drink no shit 25 healing potions. <laughs> Cuz you cannot leave this room after the fight initiates. All the doors like disappear mm-hmm. basically. Um so you're just pounding them down. 
So I pound down all this, of these healing this giant barbarian is just like <laughs> knocking the tops off of it. He's got four in each hand. He's smashing well. That's them. the thing is, just, like they're they're tiny. They only they only heal like eight or nine hit points. You're, you're, so. just, you're just taking the whole thing and putting it in your mouth and crunching it <laughs> like a like a big gusher. I think the mental image I had was like they're so small. They're like little vials. He's just got them between his thumb and forefinger, and his like pinkies extended, and he's just like. And the thing, the game doesn't let you drink one after another. You gotta like wait. So half the time he's just like, <laughs> kind of slowly. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's got but, a deep uh, cork in it. Yeah, you gotta really pull it out. Um. So I get all the way up to full. Drink a fire resistance potion. Kill the last doppelganger. Saravok triggers. Starts attacking me. Um, like hits me really hard. Yeah, he hits <laughs> and, super. He hits for like thirty. And. Uh, so I fall back. I think I'm at 167 hit points. Okay. Um, I fall back and I hit him like once, and then a few flaming fist people like somehow hit him, and then he teleports out. Yeah, there's a lot of teleporting away in this game. There's a lot of, especially here at the end. Mm-hmm. But so how did how did you how did you work this out? Yeah, I just I kind of lucked out. I think actually. Like, I, mm-hmm. I did the same thing of kind of body blocking and getting people in the way. Um, and Saravok didn't attack, and so I was able to... Because I have Sword of Baldurin, which is like mm-hmm. plus five against shapeshifters. So that's pretty good. And then I've got the other one that's plus three against shapeshifters, which is pretty good. That's good. And so, yeah, once I, like, realized I needed to equip all those things, I, I in my final attempt, I uh, hacked through them pretty quickly. But I, th- I don't think Saravok actually aggroed when, it, like... In the the one that I did where the Dukes died immediately, he aggroed super fast, and he was like, yes, um, you know, I'm killing you mm-hmm. here and now, that there mm-hmm. are no witnesses or something. But anyway, yeah, so it wasn't, when I finally did it, it was a really smooth, smooth kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so what did you, did you have the evidence against Saravok? I did. I had his diary. I had documents. So I just, I handed the fellow documents. Saravok says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, this guy, d- d- don't don't read that. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and you know, the Duke says, well, hold on. We're, you know, no, this guy's not under arrest till I review this stuff. Yeah. We're, and uh, Saravok says, screw that. And that's when he aggroed. Mm, yeah, he's the good autocrat. Mm-hmm. Like, this guy is the, the just uh, philosopher king. Mm-hmm. Well, his power is ostensibly supposed to be kept in check by two other dukes, right? That's their three branches of government. Well, one died. Tiffany, yeah. Scar, and Bath. Uh-huh. No, it was Duke Elgin. Yeah. Duke Tiffany. <laughs> and then Duke uh, Bath. Yeah. Yeah. Every every, every little, uh, you know, Baldur Gatesian, Baldurian, mm-hmm. um, learns in grade school the three, the three branches of government. So, uh, really funny... So, Saravok teleports away here. Mm-hmm. And he teleports to... So, this is his grand plan. Maybe we should talk really quick. So, sure. the, the grand plan that that someone in the Iron Throne tells me... And, like, we've pieced this together over the course of, of this, this show we've been doing. But it's very explicitly set out. It is... Mm-hmm. Uh, he wants to become a Lord of Murder. And the way he's going to go about doing that is to create... A war with Om, because a war with Om will cause so much death that he will be able to ascend to godhood. He will fill up his power meter so hard mm-hmm. with all of the murder that he creates via, you know, it's a transitive property of murder. Mm-hmm. He's the he's ultimately responsible. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like it's kind of like the the like the iPhone model of how much murder you're responsible for, right? Like, Mm. in the cobalt mine, you know, (laughs) like, are you Mm. responsible for the cobalt mine? Well, Baldur's Gate says explicitly, yes, you will be responsible for the people who die in the cobalt mine. Yeah, there is a, there's like a, a bare, the floor of like your murder meter as a West, a citizen of the West or of a developed country it's is already high. quite high. It's yeah. very, very high, yeah. Like, you mm-hmm. better not enjoy Coca-Colas because if you do, I hate to break it to you, aluminum's rough to come by. God, could you imagine Richard Nixon's? 
strong, strong commentary here on Pages of the Murder Dads, taking down mm-hmm. the man himself, Richard Nixon. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so he, the way he's doing that, and you know, we've talked about the kind of Baroque plot of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. So that's the end goal. And the way he went about that was being like causing an immense amount of stress and strain on the region with all the banditry and then mm-hmm. ruining the iron. And he was doing that to gain goodwill in Baldur's Gate so that he could become elected Grand Duke and then go to war. Well, and there's also the, uh, and and it's it's a, the the plan's one elegant piece, right? Mm-hmm. Is you kill two birds with one stone, you you whip up a paranoia of Om by framing, uh, by like, basically, uh, setting up the situation where the other dukes get murdered and blaming Omnian factions yeah. like the Shadow Thieves, yes, on those deaths. So you get rid of the dukes and put yourself in a very like great position to take their place because you're the one with all this iron. You're the you're the only uh, you're the only their only their only hope. I want to see the whiteboard session where they came up with this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got to be this is a big diagram. Sure, but anyway. So uh, yeah, yeah. So all that happens, and he teleports away in Bath. Mm-hmm. Whatever that guy's We've name. just made up this <laughs> name. It's something with a B. It's something short. Mm-hmm. He Might says, be Belt. It, I think it is Belt. So much better than Bath, my God. <laughs> uh, but he says, hold on, let me commune with my God. I'll tell you where he is. And he's like, mm, he's in the Shadow Thieves Guild. <laughs> or mm. no, just the Thieves Guild, my bad. Yeah. In the Thieves Guild. So, which is a really weird place to be. And this is where the game kind of begins to fall apart. <laughs> Do you think so? I think it becomes nonsensical for the next hour. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay. So we go to the Thieves Guild, and they say... Well, I mean, he tell it, not, not only does he find out, he also shoots us over there, too. Oh, I didn't get teleported there. I had to walk. You didn't get teleported there? No. Oh, you didn't save the other Duke. No, I only saved the, the one. woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the woman Tiffany. just teleported me right over there. Yeah, Duke Tiffany. No, that's not her name. That's not her name. She has like a like a longer, like a real person's name, not Belt. Like a real fantasy name. Yeah. Sure. Uh, no, I didn't get teleported. I had to walk over there myself. And uh, so yeah, you talk to the shadow thief or uh, this normal thief, and he's like, "Dude, this guy came through here, and he's just stabbing our dudes for no reason." <laughs> and then you walk down the stairs to follow him, and there's a guy on the floor, and he's been stabbed, and he's like, "Who's really like sassy?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's still got a bit of personality to him. And he's like, hey, this dude rolled through here and just stabbed me for no reason. And he says, watch out. There's a giant maze here. The yeah, maze- so the, the he gives a little backstory. The thieves apparently have created a labyrinth underneath their uh, their headquarters with the idea, I guess, that if anything went south, they could lure their attackers down there and they would the attackers would like get lost and die. Is that what he said? That's. I'm pretty sure that's kind of... What he said, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, but it's built on top of the city that pre-exists Baldur's Gate. The Undercity. The Undercity. Not to be confused with the Underdark. Or the Underseller. Or Menzo Baranzan. Damn. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, tell us tell us about this thieves' maze. I mean... <laughs> tell us about it. This, I got flashbacks from Durlag's Tower, to be honest. Good lord. It's, uh, yeah, so the the first, like, six enemies I just run past. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, it oozes. Like, I'm one person, and I have barbarian speed, mm-hmm. so. It's full of oozes. It's full yeah, of so skeletons I, I, with bows. It's full of traps. Yeah, the first enemies I have to kill are the skeletons with bows because they're propped up in front of a lightning trap that can even one-shot me at 166 health. Hmm. Um, because of the way, I guess, lightning, like, bounces or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, so I gotta, like, do some, do some skeleton luring where I aggro them and then walk out of, out of their line of sight and wait until they come to me and then I go kill them and then I, like, step by step walk through the traps, get hit, rest. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those skeletons kick the crap out of me. They're good. I wiped on those as much as I wiped on the Ducal Palace. 
They've got um they got magical arrows that do I don't know what element damage, but they're, they're one they're pretty... is fire and one is ice, and I think they're both plus two. Fire and ice. But, fire and ice. Uh, but I think they uh yeah I don't know their AC super high too. I had a hard time hitting them. Mm. Uh yeah it was, that was a that was a rough time all over. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually you, it's just this long windy hallway with traps in it. And you know where the traps are based on these kind of symbols on the wall, like the game kind of telegraphs it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, eventually you get to a maze portion where it's a maze and that's exactly what it is. There are invisible stalkers every once in a while. Mm-hmm. I killed those. Yeah. And eventually if you can maze your way over to the, uh, far, what? The far, far western left. corner. Yeah, western. There's a guy uh, on the ground. Another another sassy man, sassy dying man. Another man who who is like, this is the most 11th hour. Well, I guess we need to tell the players something about the plot here to legitimate making one of those, going through this maze. It's one of those things where, hey, in case you missed it. Yes. In case yeah. you didn't read any of the uh, plot important uh, diaries or letters or any of that stuff. It would be interesting to do a playthrough where you didn't do any of that and you got the grand reveal at this guy. There was a bit of conversation about that in something, maybe one of the Reddit threads mm. that we that for the show. Someone talked mm. about that somewhere. Interesting. Yeah, and I don't know how they would have understood the the game at all. But yeah, so this dude is named Winsky. Pararate, hmm. which is the worst name, and he is the balls tutor. Y- yeah, Saravox like Saravox tutor, ball ball tutor. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like the guy who taught him all about the Lord of Murder mm-hmm. and like how to become the Lord of Murder. And he like basically info dumps anything you could want to know about that process. Yep, to you. And then I said, all right, whatever. And I camped out right beside that guy. And then I went into the Undercity, which is just like Pompeii, kind of. Yeah, just a bunch of ruins. It's very it's very bluish gray mm-hmm. in there. Well, because it's underground. Sure. And I, uh, I walked down a main road, and there are six people. And I talked to them, and they're like, hey, we're down here trying to get Saravok, too. Who, you, you're, you're trying to get Saravok? Yeah, we're the remnants of the Iron Throne. We're really pissed off. And then they recognize me as Balthazar, and they're like, well, we're going to kill you. Mm -hmm. And then they attack me, and, like, in order to do these fights at this level, I have to, like, have already been raging, because, like, my rage can um, get interrupted if I am drinking a potion first, right? And, like, and weird stuff like that can happen. Um, So I reload, and I'm going to do the fight over, and then I just decide not to. Like, I just walk around them and don't fight them. I can't believe you could do that. Yeah. I could not. Are they hard? Uh, I mean, so here's the weird thing. I think it took me three or four times to do it. I th- maybe three times. First time, maybe four times. Anyway, first time destroyed. Like, I'm I'm just immediately unable to do the fight. Second time, very similar. Third mm-hmm. time, I run up to them. I deploy, like, horror and hold person, and mental domination, and some other, like, miscast magic. Like, I, like, do all my debuffs all in one go. And then Mm -hmm. summon a bunch of monsters, because I bought a wand of monster summoning for 6,000 gold. Mm. Best purchase you can ever make. It summons, it summons, like, a monster summoning version three. It's, like, two two ogres, like, two ogres and a warg. I think I can get five hobgoblins out of that thing. <laughs> yeah, it was rad. Uh, cool. Also, like, probably existentially worrying for, like, the sentient hobgoblins. Yeah. You know, it's probably bad for them, but... They're like Mr. Meeseeks. Yeah, they, they just... Existence is painful! They just want to <laughs> They just want to kill. Yeah. You know? um, and so, so, yeah, I did that, and they were, like, all afraid, and they all ran away and stuff, and then I made, like, very quick work of them that time. Oh, cool. So, yeah, it was a very interesting, like, oh, no, this is very hard to, oh, this is actually just fine if I blow all of my spells on it. Mm hmm. Eventually, I find uh, an entrance to a uh, Skeletor temple. So, you didn't talk to Tomoko? 
I did, and she's at the entrance of the Skeletor Temple. Oh, oh I guess she me. is right in front of it, but kind of yeah. out in the street. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, she says, hey, it's me. I, I told you. I told you, bro. If, we, if I saw you again, it's going to go bad for she you. told you about states, bro? <laughs> told you about states, bro. Told you about not agreeing to not kill my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And I said, look, Tomoko, don't do this. He's not worth it. And she's like, look, I'm fucked either way. Either you kill him or, or, or you know, bad things are going to happen. Or he becomes well, the well, lord of murder. <laughs> yeah, so it's all just, it's all a wash. And I tell her, look, don't throw your life away. And then she's like, I gotta. So I had to kill her. Yeah, I, I tried to, I took what I thought was the conversation tree to be like, hey, please just let me, like, I'm doing what I got to do here. I don't want to kill this guy, but... A dream told me to, so <laughs> I probably should. Mm-hmm. I, I like tried to do. I tried to talk my way out of it. And she was not having any of that. Yeah. So, yeah, but she drops a tower shield plus one. She drops full plate mail. That's the best plate mail I've seen in the game. Th- Couldn't wear it. Well, here's the weird thing about the the mail. It is or not, not plate mail. Plate armor. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the weird thing about it. Is it the story? It's like named or whatever. And the story says that a priest of Baal owned it before. And it was his famous, like, murder armor. But there is no alignment check on that thing. Hmm. Anybody can wear it. So Minsk got uh, pretty sweet. (laughs) And I had such good plate armor that I had to drop a plate armor plus one on the ground. Damn. Yeah. Just wasn't even worth it. Well, there you go. Mm Mm-hmm. So I walk through the door, and here we are. It's all led up to... This. Mm-hmm. There's even a big logo on the ground. <laughs> big, big game logo. You know you're in the right place. Like, a, like the Nike swoosh, but for murder. Um, if you try to go, like, skirt around the right side of the room, uh, battle horrors will appear and just, like, bother you. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I, I, you know, I save my game at the entrance. I do a little test. I walk up, and if you walk up straight up to the throne, uh, Saravok is there. And there's a dialogue option that basically says, I'm going to murder, like, fuck you and your god and the horse you rode in on. You're dying today. And you can, you, you just, you, you get it on. Mm-hmm. At which point, Saravok summons, like, Angelo, Tazok, and there's a caster behind you. Uh, so that is Angelo. Oh, Angelo's he, the caster. He teleports. Yeah, he like casts a spell, and then I had to do this. I did this fight for a full hour. Mm. I have a pretty good idea how the flow of the fight goes. <laughs> okay, so I only that only happened to me once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he so, basically once he gets one spell off, he teleports like near the entrance. Yeah, like on the other side of that logo. Yep. Um. So I do that once, and I'm like, okay, well that's not working. Um. It's a lot of DPS. Like it's, and I can tell that Saravok seems to be right on par with the Demon Knight situation. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to be a DPS race. So I've got to, like, fight him alone. So what I do is I reload and get a... I get one of my explosive potions. And I walk to the bottom left kind of corner of the map. And then I walk up until I can throw an explosive potion where it will barely hit Saravok. And I throw it into the fog of war. It explodes and hits Saravok. The combat music starts playing. I run down to the bottom left-hand corner of the map for a few seconds. Um, a battle horror spawns, and I'm like, oh, I, is he not following me? And I walk up a little bit, and Saravok has, in fact, followed me. He's in the, like all, already down to the logo. Hmm. Um, I do the dialogue option to fight him. Then the battle horror despawns. I run to the, the corner of the map. Um, behind a statue, so I don't have any line of sight into the uh, to my right to like this the center of the map anymore. It's just a tiny little alcove, me and a statue, and I fight uh, I fight him there. That one doesn't work out because one of my buffs wore off. Like the whole the whole like process took a little too long because mm-hmm. I waited. I reload the game. I do that exact same thing again, again but without waiting, and uh, I kill him in the corner. Just him. Oh, you cheesed it. I guess. And you know what? Um, all those people who voted, God knows what episode, three, four. Oh, they voted that if you, uh, about you 
smiting, smiting a Tazok. Tazok. And you I did know. not smite Tazok. I never smote Tazok. You were wrong, people. You betrayed them. I don't know if I betrayed them. They guessed. I'm pretty wrong. sure it was. A, this was like a, a consumer guarantee. <laughs> I think you've got to honor their their wishes. Well, I think you got to go back and play the whole game again. <laughs> I think we can play the tape back. It was a. It was a. I'm gonna try to do this. You are, you're only saying that because you know I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. The, I mean the. the the missile has left the silo here because the moment you get the killing blow on Saravok, the game freezes, makes a final save, and uh, and the credits roll. So let me let me talk about my final battle experience, and then we'll talk about that credits rolling final sure. thing. Sure, yeah, it's a real doozy of a of a finale there. Mm-hmm. So I roll in there. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I do this fight for an hour. Um, an interesting thing happened. So so let me say this. So you remember all the way back in the Iron Throne, like several episodes back before we went to Candlekeep? Yeah. And I initiated that fight at the top of the stairs, and then I just ran away. Yeah. And I just continued to play the game. So this session, when I went back to the top of the Iron Throne, those people were still there. <laughs> and so, and here's the thing. I had just as hard of a time killing them. So I just ran away, and then I went back up again. And then they weren't there. So there's a lot of like weird fight scripting that happens in this game. You just called me cheesing for killing a guy in the corner. You are evaporating parties. That wasn't my fault. I wanted to chain them down, and they just didn't. Mm. But yes, I did do that. <laughs> so the reason, the reason I say that is... Uh, so what happens for me is I do this fight over and over and over again, and I change out all of my spells. I like tried to run around and sleep a lot to like create respawning packs of enemies so I could level up because I was, I was only like 1600 experience away from leveling up that I abandoned that very quickly <laughs> um, all kinds of stuff I, I just did it over and over and over again so the way I did it finally is I um, summoned a bunch of monsters summoned two skeletons and then like three monsters with my wand of monster summoning Mm-hmm. I gave Minsk a potion of of valor. Mm-hmm. Um, I cast bless on him. I cast every it's stone skin or bark skin, all the good stuff. Every buff I could get on him, and I buffed everybody else. I gave I, I, so yeah, so buffed everybody, or buffed him in particular, but then gave everyone else haste, gave them chant, gave them all that stuff. So I send him up, him and the monsters, up to Saravak. He mm-hmm. does the dialogue. And then I just have him, like, go full on going for Saravok at the top. Because I know that the caster is going to teleport into my party, which is back toward the the um, the entrance for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So the caster comes in. I uh, basically teleports into the middle of an awaiting death trap. Yeah. So does that. Teleports in. I kill them. But, oh, yeah, so, no. Uh, so, teleports into there, and then triggers a trap of cloud kill. Oh. Which kills half of my party, <laughs> but also him. <laughs> okay? And so, cloud, so then, like, I notice I'm not being attacked by Saravok. I'm not being attacked by the other guy. But I only have Dinah here, Ticklevar, and Kivan remaining. Okay. So I make a quick save here because I'm not in combat anymore. Like, the other ones have not aggroed me. Minsk has died. Like, he just <laughs> died getting wailed on by Saravok. So whatever monsters are, are remaining are in the fog of war. Yeah. No, oh, Saravok's killed my monsters, too. Okay. So it's just, like, Saravok and then um, Tezok, I guess, chilling out. Mm-hmm. And then it is me, like, two casters and an archer okay. chilling out. I make my quick save. You can't leave this room. Like, once you initiate this fight, you cannot leave. Mm-hmm. So I just... And I can't rest in this location. So I have to deal with whatever spells I have left. So I, like, look through my entire inventory for potions, for scrolls, anything. I find two scrolls of prote- protection from evil. 
Hmm. A haste and something else. A blind. So I put, I give uh, Ticklevar the blind scroll. I cast haste on everybody and I cast protection from evil on Dinahir and Ticklevar. And then we just go for it. Mm -hmm. Like I straight up just like get run into the fog of war, get ready to go for it. Kivan shooting plus two arrows with a plus three bow. Like we're just trying really hard. So I blind uh, the archer, Tezok, mm -hmm. and then um, we. I just repeatedly summon monsters to keep Saravok interested in killing the monsters while I shoot him with my plus five attack, and that's mm -hmm. how I beat the game. Nice. Yeah. It's with half the party dead. With half of the party dead, yeah. And I was actually looking at the Steam achievements. There are there are achievements for uh, doing it with everyone except the main character dead, and then with everyone alive. Interesting. Yeah. So sadly, I didn't get either of those. Oh, like a, a last a last uh, last man slash last woman standing mm -hmm. achievement, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fun. So. Uh, Tell me about this little final cutscene. <laughs> yeah, really cool. So uh, first scene is a zoom in of a dead Saravok on the logo, which was already incorrect because if the if the cinema had taken into account his death location for me, he would be slumped in the corner <laughs> of his of his little temple. Maybe less cinematic. Yeah. Um, and uh, zooms in, and he turns into pure energy, like glowing energy, and, and like evaporates mm -hmm. right and then you kind of uh all that energy like there's a there's a fade and you go to a statue of saravok there's like you're looking at a statue of saravok on a little pedestal and the statue crumbles right and then the camera zooms out and there are two statues next to saravok and then the camera pans and it's an entire cylinder that you're inside, just ostensibly filled with statues. And there's this, there's the, there's the Baldur's Gate skull logo at the bottom, like the representation of Bale. And the, the, the implication here being, there are so many ball spawn. There are just, there are hundreds and hundreds of them. And that, and that's how I remember the cinematic. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. And presumably, as each one dies the the ball at the bottom gets more powerful. Sure. The energy pools somehow. Mhm. Mm or that inner or there's like a highlander thing where that energy is disseminated amongst the others. I don't, it's a little vague to me. Well, uh, no, I think it's actually like uh it definitely is the highlander thing. Okay. I think that's a definitive statement cuz mm -hmm. throne of ball is kind of all about that part. Sure. Yeah. But spoilers. Spoilers! What? <laughs> I, that's what Throne of Ball is about. I, I, I don't want to. I, I hate to break it to anyone, but it is called Throne of Ball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that is the game. G Wiz. <laughs> what did you think? G Wiz. I think it's good. I think it's a good game. Mm -hmm. I think I enjoy this game much more than many other games. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Like I and you know. I was re-listening to episode nine, and I hope that people don't get the impression that we're we're like playing this game. We're like spite playing it. Do you, like does it sound like we're doing that? Uh, I think there are sections of like we're pretty we're pretty low on Tales of the Sword Coast and the uh, and the Tower, right? It's not um, great. That's not great content. <laughs> I'm pretty low on that Thieves Maze. I think that's objectively <laughs> terrible. Yeah, and no, there are t there there are things that I think are weak about this game, but overall, this game A has aged very well, and B is like, I think, just incredibly playable today by today's standards in gaming, mm -hmm. and uh, and it is a it is a fun game, and in spite of the challenges and like the weirdness that we've talked about, a very enjoyable experience that I didn't have to force myself through by any means. Yeah. Mm hmm. I second that. Yeah, what a fun time. It's true. All right, so um, where are the future plans? Danny, where are we doing? This is the end of season one. This is the end of season one. So I think what we'll do is I tried to start a uh, a Black Pits game with Balthazar. I, it wouldn't let me. Yeah. Like, I could not load that character file. Yeah, I don't think we're doing the Black Pits. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that's in the works, but I installed um, Siege of Dragonspear today. 
and there's actually a mode where you can load. Uh, so I was just like fucking around with it, and I loaded uh, my last save game from Baldur's Gate. Because when you download Siege of Dragon Spear, you can like access all the Baldur's Gate content through Cause, that. Yeah, because it's technically an expansion. Yeah, it's technically just an expansion. So it just makes everything look spiffier. Mm-hmm. Um, it would have actually been interesting to play the game with the with that UI, but whatever. Hmm. Um, and uh, the and like so, if if you have that expansion installed and you beat Baldur's Gate, it seamlessly transitions you to the beginning of Siege of Dragon Spear. Oh. So I think I think that's our move. Yeah, yeah, that's that is what we'll do. And I think our next episode, we're still doing a lore episode. I think, I think, yeah. I think it'll be a little mini sode. We'll do like a little like twenty thirty minute mini sode. Where we talk about the books we've read, how this fits into our other knowledge about the Sword Coast and Forgotten mm-hmm. Realms, that kind of thing. It'll be a little, because yeah. uh, I am very, very busy at the end of October, so it'll uh, be a nice little mini-sode, and then we'll be right back in it at the top of November uh, with Siege Dragon Spear. Think of it as a uh, think of it as a little, a little break between Season 1 and Season 2. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A little teaser content, like a little yeah. 400 days. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you played that, all right, yeah. So if you enjoy these, like I say at the top of the episode, please hit the like button. If you want to listen to more of this and see what we have to say about Siege Dragon Spear, uh, hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter. You can support the show on Patreon. That would really help us out if you supported this show on Patreon. Um, and uh, you can go on our Facebook. We have a neat little Facebook. I hear it's got great stuff. It's got great content. I put that content up all the time. Mm hmm. Like two times a week, there's new content. What a fun time. What a good time. Oh, you know what? And I also have a demo for our theme. There's going to be a new musical theme song oh. for season two. I have heard this, I think. Is is it the one that you, you sent uh-huh, me? Uh-huh. Uh, you, you guys are just in for a treat. It's going to be good. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, so I'm Cameron. And I'm Danny. And this is Mages and Murder Dads. Thank you for listening. Ciao. So saith the wise Alondo.